<clears throat> Hello everybody, dear colleagues, Department of Endocrinology, Tbilisi State Medical University presents the lecture, the thyroid, basic concepts, goiter, iron deficiency, autoimmunity, cancer. Lecture is given by the head of the Endocrinology Department of the Tbilisi State Medical University, Professor David Metzorelli. The thyroid basic concepts. Anatomy at first. The normal thyroid consists of pear shaped left and right lobes. The lobes extend from uh, the thyroid cartilage at the sixth tracheal ring, and the isthmus joins the interior parts of the lobes and cross the second and fourth tracheal rings. The cricoid cartilage is an easily landmark of uh, identified, and the tracheal rings extend beneath this cartilage. Thyroid tissue is organized into follicles, which are lined by a single layer of epithelial cells and contain colloid. The parafollicular or C cells are between the follicles. The thyroid developed from the 12 weeks of fetal life. Here we can see the thyroid follicles and C cells in the parafollicular space. The normal thyroid gland is not visible or easily palpable. By the time a goiter is palpable, there has usually been a doubling of the size of the gland. Once a goiter is visible, it is about three times the size of a normal gland. The surface anatomy of the thyroid is of great importance for clinical evaluation. Note that if the uh, trachea cannot be palpated, usually because of a cervical kyphosis, the thyroid gland will be retrosternal. Here we can see a young lady with diffuse goiter. Thyroid hormone synthesis. The thyroid mainly produces tyroxine T4 and 3-eotyronine T3. Both are derived from the amino acid tyrosine and iodine. Iodine is trapped in the epithelial cells of the thyroid gland via an active transport mechanism. It is then attached to the thyroid residues within a thyroid protein called tyroglobulin. This protein is secreted into the follicle to form of colloid. Further enzyme reactions from T4 and T3 in tyroglobulin, from which they can be secreted. Most normal thyroid secretion is in the form of T4, about 80 mg per day, microgram per day, with a small amount of T3, 10 microgram day. The thyroid also secretes calcitonin which is produced from the C cells. Here we can see the pink stained smooth material in the follicles as a colloid. The physiology of thyroid hormones. The main stimulation of thyroid hormone release and synthesis is the thyroid stimulating hormone TSH from the pituitary. TSH acts through a surface receptor in the thyroid. TSH is under negative feedback at the level of the hypothalamus and pituitary, which sends the level of thyroid hormones in the plasma. Here we can see at this game the hypothalamus release the TRH, tyroliberine, and it uh, stimulates the secretion from the adrenal hypophysis the TSH, and TSH stimulate the uh, secretion of thyroid hormone T4 and T3. And there is the negative feedback, 
T4 and T3 result suppression of TRH and TSH uh, secretion. Several non-thyroidal conditions can also change thyroid function. For example, physical stress, psychical stress, pregnancy, drugs, foods containing iodine, for example, and there is a list of drugs that commonly affect thyroid function. Amiodarone, glucocorticoids, estrogens, benzodiazepines. In other non-thyroidal conditions which can change thyroid function are high level of luteinizing hormone, LH, and human chorionic gonadotrophin, HCG, can also stimulate the TSH receptor and increase thyroid hormone levels. In the blood, T4 circulates bond to the thyroid binding globulin, TBG, and is converted in the peripheral tissue to T3. Thyroid hormones pass into the cell and bind to nuclear receptors to regulate gene expression. Physiological action of thyroid hormones include cellular differentiation, fetal development, childhood growth, mental function, simulation of metabolic pathways, stimulation of metabolic pathways, increased tissue oxygen consumption. Thyroid tests. Serum TSH and free T4 are Reliable and convenient measures of thyroid function if they are measured in the same sample. Measuring the serum TSH alone can be misleading because some patients with secondary hypothyroidism caused by the pituitary disease will have TSH levels in the normal range. And uh, the characteristic of these uh, uh, tests. Test type and parameters which they are measured. Thyroid hormones, thyroglobal TSH, free and total T4, free and total T3. And also, uh, in clinical practice, we use uh, uh, estimation of thyroglobulin level in the blood and antibodies level, thyroid antibodies level in the blood. Radiological, that the chest X-ray, thoracic inlet X-ray, and thyroid ultrasound, and the last is very important. The thoracic inlet, also known as the superior thoracic apertube, refers to the opening at the top of the thoracic cavity, and it uh, uh, may give the uh, important information in case of retrosternal goiter. Nuclear medicine. Technician isotope and iodine, iodine isotope are used in the diagnosis and also thyroid biopsy, needle biopsy, or in any cases, after uh, uh, thyroidectomy, uh, part of a uh, resection of thyroid tissue for uh, histological study. Thyroid tests include total T measurements, and in this it includes both the free and the TBG bond hormone, and will therefore be affected by the concentration of TBG. Several drugs, particularly estrogens, may rise TBG concentrations, and the total T4, while the free T4, will remain normal. The uh, serum thyroglobulin is a marker of the amount of differentiated thyroid tissue and is most useful in the follow-up of the patient with thyroid carcinoma. Most laboratories will test for circulating antibodies against thyroid peroxidase or microsomes and thyroglobulin, which are common in the general population. 
radiology, isotope studies, and biopsies are useful in many cases of the investigation of goiters. Thyroid and endocrine autoimmunity. Autoimmune disease, disease is a common cause of thyroid pathology. The autoimmune pathogenesis is characterized by a lymphocyte infiltration in the thyroid and serum antibodies against thyroid peroxidase, thyroglobulin, and thyroid stimulating hormone receptors. Autoimmunity may be classified into organ specific and non organ specific. Patients with thyroid autoimmune disease are at increased risk of other autoimmune diseases, but particularly organ-specific conditions are the vitamin B12 deficiency due to pernicious anemia, gastric, parietal, cell, and intrinsic factor antibodies, Addison disease, adrenal antibodies, and primary hypoparathyroidism. The end result of the autoimmune process is fibrosis and atrophy of the gland and an irreversible failure fil 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 of hormone production. Examination of the thyroid. The basic assessment of the thyroid is the examination of the hands, eyes, neck, skin, pulse, and heart. The hand is examined uh, for a tremor, nail change, clubbing, sweating, hurt, or cold temperature. The eyes may show edema, edema, or graves eye signs. The skin may show rashes or pre-tibial edema. The neck is best examined from behind with the patient seated on the chair in the following order. Inspect for goiter. Identify cricoid cartilage, cartilage and sternal notch. Gently palpate for Tracheal deviation, palpate over trachea and under sternomastoid muscle for goiter, palpate for anterior and posterior triangle cervical lymph nodes, ask patients to swallow, supply a glass of water, while feeling mouse to check its rise. Listen to a mouse with a stethoscope. Two key points of this part of lecture. The thyroid covers the upper tracheal ring. Pituitary TSA stimulates thyroid hormone production and, production and secretion. Both T4 and T3 are derived from the iodinated tyrosine. tyrosine. The thyroid produces mostly 80% T4, and the thyroid produces 80 microgram T4 per day. And most T3 is formed from T4 in peripheral tissues. And thyroid hormones affect all tissues' metabolic pathways. Iodine deficiency. Normal dietary iodine intake for non pregnant adults is 100 to 150 microgram per day. And WHO recommends 200 micrograms a day for pregnant or lactating women and 50 to 90 micrograms a day for infants younger than one year. Iodine deficiency is the commonest cause of thyroid disease worldwide. Iodine is lacking in the soil, in the mountainous regions, and in inland areas. 30% of the world population has been estimated to be iodine deficient. The clinical consequences of the iodine deficiency it's abnormal thyroid function, endemic goiter, endemic creatinine, perinatal death, infant mortality, infertility. The commonest pathology is the goiter, which developed because of 
hyperplasia of thyroid tissue and then adaptation to low iodine level. In this picture, we can see the uh, list of the top 10 iodine deficient countries. And it's very important that <coughs> uh, iodine deficient country may be not only developing countries, but developed countries also, such as, for example, United Kingdom, which takes in this list eight place. And uh, in 2011, <coughs> it was it published uh, the uh, new data in international uh, in the special newsletter. Uh, in, uh, it's an International Council for Controlling of Iodine Deficiency Disorders (ICC IDD) newsletter, and uh, <coughs> uh, the information was. Iodine deficiency uncovered in the United Kingdom. A national study finds more than two thirds of school girls have low iodine intake. In United States also, in United States, dietary iodine status remains sufficient overall, but pregnant women may be mildly iodine deficient. So it means that it's necessary, absolutely necessary, to have permanent iodine uh, prophylaxis for prevention of iodine deficiency disorders. Cretinism. Cretinism is the most extreme manifestation of iodine deficiency disorders. Cretinism can be divided into neurologic and myxidematous subtypes. These subtypes have considerable clinical overlap, and both conditions can be prevented by adequate maternal and childhood iodine intake. Neurologic creatinism. Neurologic creatinism is thought to be caused by a severe IDD with hypothyroidism in the mother during pregnancy and is characterized by a mental retardation, abnormal gait, and Defmutis, but not by goita or hypothyroidism in the child. Here we can see persons with neurological retinitis. And mixed edematous creatinism. Mixed dimensional creatinism is considered a result from iodine deficiency and hypothyroidism in the fetus during late pregnancy or in the neonatal period, resulting in mental retardation, short stature, goiter, and hypothyroidism. In this picture, you can see a healthy man without iodine deficiency, uh, 21 years old. And of the girls of the same age with mixed hematous creatinine. About 40 million people suffer mental handicap, handicap due to iodine deficiency, and endemic creatinine affects over 10 million people. Iodine intake can be measured by 24 urinary iodine excretion. There are some special tools for assessing of degree of iodine deficiency in population. Among them, very important is estimation of median or urine iodine concentration in microgram per liter in population. It's not a tool for personal uh, diagnosis. It's a tool for um, study of um, population for epidemiology. So, if in uh, this, any region, in representative population, the uh, data of uh, urine iodine concentration is uh, done, we should find median in this uh, list of uh, this data, and if median or urine iodine concentration 
in microgram per liter is more than 100. It indicates that this population have enough iodine supply. But in uh, population with severe iodine deficiency, usually the median of urine concentration of uh, iodine is less than 20 microgram per liter. The, another tool for assessing of degrees of iodine deficiency in population is the prevalence of goiter. In uh, population with enough iodine supply, the goiter prevalence usually should be less than 5%. But in case of iodine deficiency, the goiter prevalence increased and uh, in case of severe iodine deficiency population, the goiter prevalence usually is more than 30%. Very important is the information about neonatal thyroid stimulating hormone. In iodine sufficient uh, population, in uh, newborn babies, TSH uh, concentration should be less than 5 international units per milliliter in whole blood. So only less than 3% from all newborn babies in um, iodine sufficient population uh, may be uh, TSH, neonatal TSH level more than five international units, only in 3% from newborn babies. In case of iodine deficiency in population, the uh, prevalence such cases with more than five international units per milliliter in newborn babies, this prevalence increased. And in case of severe iodine deficiency in population, the um, prevalence of cases with more than five international units uh, per milliliter of neonatal TSH increased more than 40%, 40% from all newborn babies. And uh, prevalence of uh, cases of creatinine, usually we can see in areas with uh, moderate or severe iodine deficiency. The treatment of iodine deficiency is to increase iodine in the diet. Seafood contains high levels of iodine. Also, iodine is added to animal feed and good iodine levels are obtained from dairy products, meat and eggs. In endemic areas, use of sodium or potassium iodide tablet salt, uh, table salt is beneficial. Conversely, Extensive intake of iodine, for example, uh, seaweed, in iodine-rich regions can lead uh, to toxicosis. Definition of goiter. What is goiter? Goiter is the enlargement of the thyroid gland, tyromegaly, causing a swelling in the front part of the neck. Goiter may be presented at birth or detected at any age thereafter. Patients may have goiters that are diffuse or nodular, and the goiters may be associated with normal, decreased, or increased thyroid hormone production. Etiology of goiter may be different. In any cases, mm, uh, develop another goiter, uh, it may be malignant tumor or benign, or you know, grave disease may result going to thyroid enlargement, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, iodine deficiency, thyroid neoplasia, goitrogenes, radiation exposure, deposition disease, for amyloid, for example. Etiology of goiter. The commonest cause of goiter in the Western world are nodular thyroid disease and autoimmune disease. Nodal thyroid disease develops because of 
focal hyperplasia of thyroid follicular cells in combination with scarring and other damage to the connective tissue network of the thyroid. A degree of subclinical thyroid nodularity is very common over the age of 40 years. Graves disease stimulates diffuse enlargement of the thyroid follicles through the presence of thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins. In Hashimoto's thyroiditis, a lymphocyte infiltration causes thyroid swelling. Iodine deficiency is the commonest cause of goiter worldwide, and is, it has been suggested that at last 650 uh, million people suffer goiter from iodine deficiency. The causes of goiter in children and adults are similar, but their relative frequency varies substantially. Symptoms and signs. In case of nodal goiter, the present symptoms of nodal goiter include slow development of lump in neck, insidious onset of tiltus causes, dysphagia, cold, sudden goiter enlargement, sudden neck pain, Strider, hoarse voice, or I suggest carcinoma. The one third of nodal goiter is commonly insidious with a gradual increase in the number of nodules. The nodules are almost always thin, more freely the swallowing and are non tender. Patients may have symptoms of hyperthyroidism. However, in contrast to hyperthyroidism or grave disease, the oversecretion of thyroid hormones develops insidiously. In incidental findings of trail health deviation on a chest radiograph is a common presentation of goiter. An unusual acute presentation may be caused by a hemorrhage into a degenerating nodule or cyst. All acute presentations require urgent assessment and inter intervention because of the risk to their airway. A single nodule raises the question of thyroid dysplasia. Similarly, a particularly large or dominant nodule in a gland with multiple nodules carries a risk of carcinoma in approximately 10%. Autoimmune thyroid disease. Patients <coughs> with autoimmune goiters may present with symptoms and signs of thyrotoxicosis in case of Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism in case of Hashimoto's disease. The one third of symptoms is often acute, and the goiter may be an incidental finding in examination. However, a significant minority of patients with autoimmune thyroid disease may be eutyroid. <clears throat> the neck swellings are usually diffuse, firm, and symmetrical. However, in severe or long standing grave disease, irregular hyperplasia, degeneration, and metaplasia occurs in the gland and nodules may develop. Therefore, thyroid nodules do not include the diagnosis of Graves' disease. A bruit may be heard in patients with Graves' thyrotoxicosis. Trial deviation is unusual and symptoms and signs of compression of neck structure are rare. Measurement of TSH and free T4 are essential for investigation. Furthermore, a T3 level should be tested in anyone with a suppressed TSH. A chest and thoracic internal radiograph will help to review the retrosternal extension and trahial deviation or narrowing. X-rays will also reveal calcifications. Several pathologies are associated with thyroid calcification, including papillary and medullary thyroid cancer, but the commonest cause of calcification is old hemorrhage. An ultrasound of the thyroid is an excellent test to confirm thyroid nodularity. Ultrasound will also give an accurate size of nodule, 
the number of nodes and the presence of cystic lesions. A particularly large or dominant node can also identify it. The ultrasound scan is also a useful baseline for future, future tests to follow small, less than one centimeter lesions or small goiters. Computed tomography scanning is helpful in evaluating large retrosternal goiters. Technician thyroid scanning is useful in identifying cold nodes, which cold nodules, which may be carcinomas, and not no, hot nodules, which are easily treated with radioiodine. Finally, the biopsy of dominant <coughs> cold or hard nodules should yield diagnostic information in 80% of cases when performed by experienced physicians. Ultrasound guided needle biopsy by an experienced radiologist is useful for draining and diagnosis of thyroid cysts. Here we can see technetium uptake scan showing a hot nodule of the right thyroid lobe in scanogram. And technetium uptake scan showing a cold nodule in the left lower low pole. Here we can see a right side nodular goiter, it was circled, with trachea shift to left. And the medical history of this patient. The patient had had a left uh, uh, hemithyroidectomy, but the right lobe continues to grow. The computed tomographic scan of the neck and chest showed the goiter in the neck. It's a top image. Extending through many cuts deep into the middle mediastinum, bottom image. A specialist in the canal, endocrine surgeon managed to deliver the goiter into the neck without a sternal split and successfully removed it. Important initial tests include serum TSH, pre T4, serum T3 should always be checked if TSH is low, thyroid peroxidase per, uh, or microsomal, antibody, autoantibodies, thyroid ultrasound, chest and thoracic inlet radiograph. Management, medical treatment. Tyroxine should only be used in patients with elevated TSH levels, and the aim should be to maintain the TSH level in the normal range. Treatment with tyroxine had been used to suppress TSH secretion, and the rate of goiter size reduction in this treatment is poor. Furthermore, suppression of TSH puts the patient in risk, at risk of osteoporosis and atrial fibrillation in the long term. And uh, radioiodine treatment. A sufficient dose of radioiodine will result in a 50% reduction of the size of non-toxic nodal goiters over a two-year follow-up period. Radioiodine is safe. Patients must be followed closely for radioiodine, radioiodine induced Hypothyroidies and surgery. Surgery remains a highly effective treatment in the hands of an expert surgeon. In a nodular thyroid disease, recurrent nodules occur unless sufficient thyroid tissue is removed. Therefore, a near total thyroidectomy is recommended, and patients will be depend on a lifelong T4 replacement. And the <clears throat> next topic is thyroid cancer. What about etiology of thyroid cancer? The best documented risk factor for thyroid cancer is exposure to radiation. 
This may have occurred as a result of medical treatment, for example, radiotherapy given for a childhood lymphoma, or radioiodine from nuclear fellows, as after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in the Ukraine in 1986. Children under 14 years of age at the time of exposure are the most vulnerable. Rarely, thyroid cancer may be inherited. However, in most cases, no etiological factor for thyroid cancer is evident. The um, prevalence of uh, thyroid cancer increased worldwide. For example, according to a uh, United States population survey, the number of new cases of thyroid cancer is increased from 2009, it was uh, 37,200, uh, to uh, 2014 years, 63,000. And according uh, again from United States data, from 1975 to 2009, the number of new cases of differentiated thyroid cancer tripled on every 100,000 inhabitants. And this is data of thyroid cancer in Belarus before and after the Chernobyl incident. And especially the um, incidence of uh, thyroid uh, cancer increased in a group of children with age from 0 to 14. And less increment we can see in adults. This picture shows the childhood thyroid cancer in Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia uh, just after the Chernobyl accident and after three and more years from this accident. And we can see that in Belarus the increment is dramatical. Over the world, the incidence of uh, thyroid cancer increased, but it's um, very interesting that this increment depends only on um, increasing of papillary uh, thyroid cancer, but follicle thyroid cancer and other forms of thyroid cancer remain the same. There are different types of thyroid cancer. It's a papillary cancer, follicular cancer, medullary cancer, anaplastic cancer, and also maybe a heart uh, um, type and uh, lymphoma also. Symptoms and signs of thyroid cancer. The pre presentation is usually, usually with a progressive swelling in the neck, either because of the primary tumors or because of lymph node metastasis. The patient is nearly always eutyroid. Nodules are usually either single and hard or are dominant nodules in a, a background of a nodal thyroid gland. Nodules in patients under 40 years of age should always be viewed as suspicious. In this picture, we can see a follicular nucleus presenting as a single nodule in a young male adult. Hoarseness of the voice may be a sign of recurrent laryngeal nerve compression or invasion. Some tumors will be sucked down and infiltrate the surrounding tissue in the neck. Lymphadenopathy may be felt. There is a higher incidence of thyroid neoplasia in patients with grave disease and 10 to 20 percent of dominant cold nodules in multinodal goitrogen will be carcinomas. Therefore, a pre-existing thyroid diagnosis should not deter investigation for neoplasia. Distant metastasis occur most commonly to the lungs or bones. And diagnosis of thyroid cancer. 
we can see the diagnostic algorithm for the thyroid cancer. And <clears throat> in this uh, diagnostic algorithm says that initially, when we detect thyroid node, no, we should make blood tests for um, uh, TSH. And uh, TSH suppression will indicate about hyperthyroidism. And in case of normal or high TSH, we can exclude hyperthyroidism. Why it's so important? Why is it so important to detect hyperthyroidism? Because this hyperthyroidism may be due to uh, activity of a node and hyperfunctioning node in almost all cases is not malignant. And because of this, the uh, at first suspicious uh, data for ultrasound uh, for example, microcalcifications of a uh, node, absence of hollow, irregular margins, hypoehoic node, increased intranodal flow, it's all are suspicious changes. And in such cases of uh, thyroid cancer, we should decide is it uh, necessary to make biopsy, FNA, fine needle aspiration biopsy, or not? And because of this, at first, we should make TSH test. And um, uh, uh, as I tell you, when uh, the hyperthyroidism is detected, the next should be, next step of the in diagnosis should be um, the uh, scintigraph of thyroid. In uh, this uh, picture, you can see hot node in the thyroid gland, uh, which uh, was detected uh, in uh, right lobe of thyroid. And in such cases, uh, there is no need to make um, uh, a biopsy because, as I tell you, in almost all cases, this is an adenoma, not cancer. In another cases, when uh, TSH is normal or high, uh, I mean cases of uh, thyroid, uh, thyroid uh, uh, nodal, nodal uh, in cases of thyroid nodal, uh, when the TSH level is normal or high, or when uh, we uh, decide that there is uh, no hot nodule, uh, we should um, make ultrasound guided FNA biopsy to um, uh, get the material for cytological uh, diagnosis. What should we do well, if we make diagnosis of malignancy? Management of thyroid cancer. Surgery is an essential part of the initial management of carcinoma of the thyroid, and it is recommended that uh, that be performed in the context of a specialist thyroid cancer program. Thyroid cancer is usually very radiosensitive, so radioiodine is an important treatment initially to be applied the remnant normal thyroid and subsequently used to target residual cancer. Lifelong follow-up is required as a current disease may develop after many years. The progression, the prognosis is generally excellent with 10-year disease-free survival of over 90% in well-differentiated thyroid carcinoma. The goals of primary treatment of differentiated thyroid carcinoma are to eradicate disease and extend recurrence-free survival. The general consensus is that total or near-total thyroidectomy is the best operation in experienced hands. Reasons to perform a complete thyroidectomy are first the high prevalence of 
multifocality and bilateral, bilaterality of papillary thyroid carcinoma due to intrathyroidal lymph uh, lymphatic spread or due to uh, novel tumors arising in a synchronous or metachronous fashion. Uh, a second compelling argument is the longer recurrent free survival after total versus less total less than total tyrolectum. Compression tyrolectomy had been associated with a lower mortality rates in adults with papillary tyroid carcinoma and children in the adolescent with radiation induced papillary thyroid carcinoma as well. The tyroidectomy should be accompanied routinely by and block the section of the central neck compartment with the clearing of lymphatic and soft tissue. Modified lateral neck dissection as advocated in case of metastasis to lateral lymph node compartment is diagnosed clinically by ultrasound or intraoperative biopsy. Meaningful iodine 1 through 1 uptake more than 0.3 percent at 24 hours by thyroid neuron can usually be demonstrated even after the most meticulous total thyroid Because of this, thyroid neuron ablation is very important. Reasons to apply routine uh, iodine 1 through 1 remnant ablation are a longer recurrence free survival in comparison with no ablation. Increase sensitivity of subsequent diagnostic iodine 1 through 1 whole body scan to detect metastasis, for example, pulmonary, pulmonary metastasis. Render serum tyroglobulin, a highly sensitive marker for residual recurrent disease during a long term follow up. And what about radio iodine remnant ablation in children? Consequently, radio iodine, radio iodine remnant ablation in children is the rule rather than the exception at most centers worldwide. However, some authors advocate a more conservative approach, restricting the procedure to select high-risk patients. Most children should be included in the high-risk groups in view of the frequent extrathyroidal invasion lymph node metastasis and distant metastasis. Current recommendations are to perform ablation six weeks after surgery. Children are placed on T3, one microgram per kilogram per day, in two or three divided doses for the first four weeks, followed by a four by a two period, two week period of withdrawal. By doing so, serum TSH will rise to a level of more than 25 million units per liter, allowing maximum radio iodine uptake, radio iodine uptake by the thyroid remnant. The ablation dose in adults varies between 25 to 100 millicurie iodine 131. In pediatric patients, Thyroid remnant ablation is successful in the majority after single dose of 30 millicurie iodine 100, you know, 131. But others use higher doses of 60 millicurie in view of the high frequency of locally advanced disease and distant metastasis in children. And follow up. Following radio iodine remnant ablation, patients are placed on TSH suppressive doses of levotiroxine aiming at serum TSH level of less than 0.1 milliunit per liter. In patients with low risk papillary thyroid carcinoma and no evidence of remaining disease, 
the target could be a TSH value between 0.1 and 0.4 milliunit per liter for several years, followed by a re uh, replacement doses of levotiroxine in later period. High-risk patients should be maintained at TSH levels equal or less than 0.1 milliunit per liter, but children may suffer from headache, insomnia, and attention deficient disorders, which should be taken into account in uh, delineating the levotiroxine dose. Children require higher uh, levotiroxine doses per kilogram body weight to reach TSH level of less than 0.1 milliunit per liter. Usually it is among 3 to 4 microgram per kilogram per day in children below the age of 10 years. But uh, the age of 16 to 8 years, but in the age of uh, 16 to 8 years, the doses should be among 2.4 to 2.8 microgram per kilogram per day, and uh, the doses may be sufficient. Growth rate and puberty are usually normal, with the accepted height reached at adult age. How can we judge this successful radio iodine remnant ablation? The success of radio iodine remnant ablation is judged about six months later by a diagnostic whole body scan. Uptake should be less than 0.1% or increasingly by TSA-stimulated serum TG, trioglobulin should be undetectable. The protocol for a diagnostic whole body scan involves stopping the levotiroxine treatment in an average of 30 days prior to, prior to the scan. Prolonged T4 withdrawal is often poorly tolerated by children and for this reason, the use of recombinant human TSH may be particularly beneficial. Recombinant TSH is uh, licensed in Europe and the United States of America as an adjunct to diagnostic whole body scan or serum thyroglobulin testing and in Europe only as an adjunct and radio iodine ablation. But in both settings, the licensing covers only adults. Thus, recombinant TSH administration in children is off-label. Recombinant TSH has been successfully used in a limited number of children so far. Neck ultrasonography should be included in the follow-up as it can detect lymph node metastases that are not suspected by palpation, diagnostic whole body scan, body scan and uh, or serum TG determination. When no evidence of still existing disease is found at six months using palpation, neck ultrasonography, whole body scan and serum TG, the patient can be followed under a lower levotiroxine dose. Serum thyroglobulin under levotiroxine treatment and neck ultrasonography should be repeated every year and with longer time intervals after no evidence of disease status for two years. Follow-up should probably be lifelong. So, thank you for attention.